Lives. Hi everybody, hi, hi, I'm Alison Gray. How are you? I'm so glad you're here. So we, you know, we want to, we're so excited about being here again at 420. What an incredible celebration. And Alex and I too, uh, always want to lend a little bit uh, more, you know, depth and philosophy to, you know, our reason for being here. So we're going to talk a little bit about, a bit about cannabis culture. I want to thank our producers. I want to thank Jonathan Singer. I hope Jonathan will start at the beginning of the program instead of somewhere in here. Jonathan, do you have the first slide? No, that is not the first slide, Jonathan. You just spilled the beans, honey. You're going from the back. You're starting at the end, yes. Oh, well. I always like to start with the end in mind. It's a very good thing. Are we, are we there? Yeah. Hmm, go to the front. Uh, it's all the way to the front. Do you want to go? Number three, 
the light of health, the numerous medical applications of cannabis for healing and hemp powder as a complete food are a boon for the body. Number four, the light of love. Cannabis opens the heart and sensitizes us to others. Number five, the light of poetry. Cannabis allows the flowing tongues of bards contact with new modes of knowing and speaking. Number six, the light of vision. Opening the third eye allows the artist in everyone access to the divine imagination. Number seven, the light of God. You can go to the next slide. That was my cannabis goddess, Cannabia, and uh, this is Cannabacus. And uh, number seven, the light of God, ganja smoking babas, the Rastafari, and many others regard cannabis as a sacrament, opening us to the highest creative source, allowing us to realize that we are the light. So, you know, it all started with this guy, Shiva, and the Ganges, you know, he's the source of the Ganges, so all around the Ganges, next slide, we have the uh, Ganja, and uh, so the Babas uh, are there and smoke the Ganja, and it's their way of making contact with Shiva. Next slide. Yes, so this is a sacred tradition, thousands of years old, that we as cannabis smokers are part of. We're reclaiming a world sacrament. Next slide. You know, in various parts of the world, it's realized to be connected with the heavenly spheres. And this is coming back to us now. Next slide. So really, many people believe that cannabis was Soma, one of the earliest uh, sacraments written about in the Rig Veda. And uh, this was a way that the uh, Hindu tradition could make contact. Not everyone, but there were uh, some, uh, it was used as a sacrament for contact with the divine. Next slide. In China, 4,000 years old, we have record of cultivation of cannabis for medicinal purposes and for uh, uh, uplifting. Uh, next slide. And in Egypt as well, we, this is a venerable plant. It's only been kept from us and criminalized. So we're uh, returning to a sacramental relationship. This is part of what I think is returning us to uh, a sacralization of the life web, of the nature web, and just a realization of its already sacred nature. Next. Uh, so, uh, Louis Armstrong, you know, one of the uh, great creators of the tradition of jazz. It really puzzles me to see marijuana connected with narcotics and dope and all that crap. It's a thousand times better than whiskey. It's an assistant, a friend. So for a lot of creative people, it's an ally. And for many uh, uh, others, it's just an antidepressant, you know. I think we all know that uh, there are a lot of pressures to keep this illegal, not for any good reasons, you know. And so uh, we envision the day when uh, the world will be free, and we see this as a uh, an evolutionary wave throughout the world when people are able uh, to legally smoke cannabis and connect with Creator uh, by tapping into this sacramental ally. It will begin a shift toward the divinization of nature and recognition of that divine nature field. Uh, next slide, let's see what we got here. So that's why I talk about the green Jesus being part of this plant, the green Mary. And uh, so, next slide. Let's see, what do we got? Yeah. So medical comes first, and uh, next, all right. Why the fuck does the government own a patent that cannabis has medicinal qualities and claim it has no medicinal qualities? Hmm, 
So, we are left with that, and that is uh, the, the spot that we're in at this political, socio-political moment. It's a moment of tremendous hope, I think, in the movement, in the sacramental movement. So thank you for investing in this uh, uplifting holiday. And uh, I want to mention that there are a coalition of ministers that released a message to, uh, to ask the government to end the war on drugs, which disproportionately uh, imprisons uh, people of color and that uh, it's, it's just for every bad reason it was created. Nixon's doctors said, hey, this stuff's great, you should legalize it. So he starts the war on drugs, you know? So we're just living under the onus of bad decisions. And it's soon to be broken because the truth will out. And thank you, thank you, cannabis. And thank you all for being here tonight. Much love. I think we'll partake.